Tell us about something that's brand new and interesting. Blonde, which is in cinemas now and is on Netflix from Wednesday. This is directed by Andrew Dominic, and it is based on the biographical fictional or historical fictional novel by Joyce Carol Oates about the imagined inner life of Marilyn Monroe. Um, it stars Anna de Armas as Norma Jean, who then becomes Marilyn. And it's very much that Marilyn is an imagined figure, a portal through which fame is achieved, but almost like a kind of possessing entity. Here is the trailer for Blonde. I know you're supposed to get used to it. And we all lose our job in the end. But I just can't. Square cut or pear shape. These I've rocks. played Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. doing another scene with Marilyn Monroe. So here's the thing. Um, there's been a lot of debate about Blonde since it played at Venice, where it got a 14-minute standing ovation. But as we know, you know, all things get standing ovations at, at Venice. And, and it's, been, it's proved very, very divisive. And I think that one of the things that's the key to understanding it is to understand what kind of movie it is. If you see it as a biopic of Marilyn Monroe, you're probably going to be infuriated by the fact that it very much tells her life story as a victim story. It's really a story about childhood trauma being revisited in adult life. If you see it as a, a film about celebrity, that behind the smiling mask of celebrity there are, you know, tears and pain, okay, that's fine, but that's not something that, you know, we haven't seen before. I think that the way to understand Blonde is that it is a horror film. It is a horror film, plain and simple. It is a horror film which portrays a life in which, as I said, childhood trauma is repeated, in which we have a, a catalogue of kind of, you know, real grotesque cruelty of, you know, monstrous studio heads, of rapes and abortions, of violent husbands and loveless lovers. And it's a film in which everything about the aesthetic of it is, you know, for my mind, influenced by things like repulsion. It's more Nightmare on Elm Street than My Night with Marilyn. At the centre of it is an absolutely transformational performance by Andy Armas, who, of course, stole the, 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 the whole film in No Time to Die, was so brilliant in Knives Out, you know, absolutely brilliant uh, actor. And her central performance, it's kind of uncanny how much she resembles what we think of as, you know, Marilyn Monroe uh, on screen. But the key word in that thing is uncanny. This is in many ways a ghost story. It is like a story about somebody being haunted by their past and somebody being haunted by a creation which then takes them over and consumes them. There is a scene that's in the film, and actually part of it is in, is in the trailer, in which she is in great distress at her dressing table waiting for Marilyn to arrive. And she's in tears and she's, she, she doesn't know what to do. And then we see in the mirror her face transform from that of Norma Jean to suddenly that megawatt smile of Marilyn Monroe. And it is like a demonic possession scene. There is no other way of describing it. And I think that one of the reasons the film has proved so divisive is that if you... If what you're looking for is something which, okay, well, you know, it doesn't credit her with the comedic talent that she shows in Some Like It Hot. In fact, when they're talking about Some Like It Hot, we see her getting, you know, getting furious uh, about the film. It takes uh, liberties with recorded factual truth and it absolutely becomes a sort of psychodrama about somebody's life imploding around them and then being crushed by everything that's happening to them and it's very full on i mean it's a you know it's an 18 rated film and you know and justifiably so but in a way cuz i kind of went into it thinking that that's what it was I thought what this is doing is a really convincing psychodrama. I'm not worried about its... I don't think it's about Marilyn Monroe. I, I think that's the key to it. And I think the more that you think it is... I mean, obviously, it's filmed by Marilyn Monroe. We just saw that trailer. There's a whole bunch of things in that which are reproductions, very, I mean, brilliantly achieved reproductions of classic scenes from Monroe's life. Certain times I was watching it, I was thinking, is, sorry, is that a reproduction or is that the original? I can't quite, I can't quite tell whether that's... Andy Armas or 
or, or Marilyn Monroe. But I think that it's just, and this is the analogy that I, I think kind of explains it. The assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, which is the Andrew Dominic film, which I, I loved. It's my favourite film of the year that it came out, 2006, 2007, is a film about celebrity in which Jesse James, played by Brad Pitt, who is you know also a you know a star figure, is killed by somebody who has idolised him from a distance, from a very young age. You know, we hear that Robert Ford used to sort of read comic books about him, and you know, you know, and and, and little paperbacks, and was absolutely enamoured by him. And this is the flip side of that. This is a film about celebrity being lethal, celebrity being dangerous. But whereas Assassination of Jesse James was a very kind of melancholic film, this is much more kind of shrieking, hysterical horror film. And I think the best way of understanding it is that if Jesse James was a film about fame disguised as a Western, then Blonde is a horror movie disguised as a film about fame. It has a fantastic soundtrack by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm a huge fan of their work anyway. But what their soundtrack does is to give it some kind of emotional weight because it's a brutal film. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's a very, very harsh, you know, the tone of it is, is kind of, like I said, it, it's a horror film. It's there to alarm. It's there to distress. There's very little levity in it. But I think it's to do with... If you if you see it as I do as a horror film, it's a very good horror film. If you're going in there looking for a um, you know a, a sympathetic portrait of Monroe, you won't get it. And it's at the cinemas. It's in cinemas now, and then it's on Netflix from Wednesday. Uh, okay, uh, Blonde. I thought I knew what the film of the week was going to be, but now I'm not quite so sure. That was a great video, wasn't it? I couldn't take my eyes off it. No, neither could they. Do they know? Do you think that they can keep up? to date with all things Kermit and Mayer's take by following us on our socials, because they're all here below. Well, they definitely know it now. That's true.